Hello everybody and welcome to Craft Quest on Call. This is number 63 and uh, we have a great show for you today. So uh, thank you for tuning in. I see there's a lot of people tuned in. So let's get right to it because we have a lot to talk about. I want to introduce my co-host from the great north, Mr. Andrew Welch. Hello, Andrew. Oh, Andrew, I just see a, a black hole here. I need to assign you. To guest one. Soul, Ryan. There you are. How are you doing? Uh, that was a picture of my soul, Ryan. That <laughs> black hole that you had of. <laughs> so, uh, well, okay, are you in a undisclosed location? Did you, like, violate the law or yeah. something? What's going on? Well, yes, I'm in an undisclosed location and uh, using rudimentary hardware that I put together in my cave. But everything everything's working pretty good. I can't, dis I can't tell you where I'm at. It would be mm -hmm. a violation of my parole. Yeah, but everything everything is working, and at least I don't have a restraining order, unlike somebody else on the show that I can't go within 500 feet of a school. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, well, try to look it, on the bright side of things. It would be odd and um, and probably difficult for you because you're not very flexible to show us your ankle bracelets. So maybe later you can just tweet out a photo of it and and show everybody <laughs> sure. what it looks like. Does that sound good? I can do that. All right. Yeah. So why are you not in your normal location? What's going on? All right, so we're going to make a uh, long story kind of brief because we've got Brandon, we got a whole bunch of other cool stuff to get to. Yeah. And don't want to ramble about this stuff for a long time. But back in, God, I don't know if it was 2018 or 2019, I ended up buying a Mac Pro rack, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, this is great. I'll buy this computer. I, can, I had this rack fetish at the time where I can just put everything in a rack and connect it via cables and everything's going to be wonderful. And it, and it was, you know, it was great that uh, it was an expensive machine, but I figured this is, you know, I'm going to keep this forever, right? I'm going to keep right. this forever. And then shortly thereafter, Apple came out with their Apple Silicon transition. And I wanted to kill myself for having spent all this money on this machine. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that, that's neither here nor there. Um, I had an issue where the machine wasn't working anymore. Like uh, I was using it and it just died. Yeah. And then I would reboot, I would get to the login screen, and then it would it would kernel panic and die. And then eventually it got to the point where it wouldn't even get to the login screen. It would just kernel panic, reboot, kernel panic, reboot. I'm like, okay, great. So I did the basic things like um, I booted into restore mode to try and yeah. restore it. Yeah, there you go. Thanks for the context. <laughs> booted it into restore mode. Um, that kernel panicked. I booted it into internet restore mode, which is a way that you can bypass the internal stuff altogether. Mm -hmm. And it will actually download over the internet a bootable image and effectively net boot, like bypassing everything. That didn't work. I disconnected all the Thunderbolt uh, peripherals that are attached there. Um, that didn't work. And then I tried uh, net booting one last time with everything disconnected. It still didn't work. I'm like, all right, I've wasted enough time on this. But obviously, this is some kind of a hardware issue, Yeah. right? If it's, if it's not even hitting the SSD drive and it's still kernel panicking, when you try to network restore mode, boot this thing, then it's some kind of hardware issue. I'm just going to bring it to Apple and I'm going to let them deal with it. Because they have geniuses. Because <clears throat> they have geniuses. They have yeah. nothing but geniuses there, right? right. So I, I bring the thing in and it was kind of comical bringing it in. I think it weighs like 70 pounds and I'm doing like a <laughs> farmer's carry, you know, getting a little workout, <clears throat> working those arms. And uh, I carry it into the Apple store and they're like, uh, Oh, we haven't seen one of these yet. I'm like, okay, that's <laughs> con confidence is waning now. This is not wonderful. And I went through the whole steps with the uh, person who was looking at it. And he agreed with me. He's like, yeah, you know, it, it can't be a software thing because you're able to net boot. You know, it's got to be some kind of hardware issue. Uh, but they, yeah. couldn't, uh, they couldn't run their hardware tests on it either. So we're like, uh, okay, we're going to have to do some more extensive hardware tests on this thing. I'm like, that's fine. That's cool. Go ahead and do it. Two days later, I get a call from somebody else. And uh, she was saying, okay, well, we couldn't even run the diagnostics on it. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to wipe the drive that's on there. Are you okay with that? We need to, you know, make it so that you can wipe the drive or give us permission. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I, I don't, it doesn't make sense to do that because we already figured out that it has to be some kind of a hardware issue. If you can't net boot the thing, right. which bypasses the, hard drive, the drive anyway, matter. yeah. 
nuking the hard drive isn't going to do anything but waste a whole lot of my time. You yeah. know, I'll have to restore, reinstall, do it, do it all. I, Couldn't I, they just I drop a time. different drive in there? I mean, that's, uh, anyway. There, there are lots of options. Let's <laughs> yeah. just put it that way. And uh, she was just like, well, you know, it's, a, it's on our checklist. This is the next thing that we, we have to do. We have to wipe the software. And I'm like, but, but please, like, help me understand. If you wipe that drive, but you can't even netboot the thing. Like, how, how is it ever going to help anything? And, yeah. and she's like, oh, you know what? Well, checklist, got to do it, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, my concern is that what's going to happen is you're going to wipe the drive. And then you're going to find out it still doesn't work. And then all that has happened here is that you've wasted a whole lot of my time because I'm going to have to set this thing up again. And so that's what ended up happening. She called me two days after that and said, yeah, um, we wiped the drive. There was no change. Uh, we found out that it was some bad RAM that was in the computer. It was, it was just thir some third-party RAM that was in there. One of the things had ah, gone bad. Okay. And I'm just like, I was very frustrated, Ryan. It's How? like when you tell your kid, don't touch the stove because it's hot. And the kid's yeah. like, let me touch the stove, you know? Yeah. But how, ahead, you're gonna ask I guess the, I, I, when you brought the, when you were telling me that you're going to bring this into the Apple store, I think I kind of did like a, like a raised eyebrow, you know, thing because yeah. I was like, Apple used, I mean, they really used to have like a lot of good in-store technical support, but I feel like that's all been kind of farmed out. And it sounds like with, you know, their checklist that it, that's likely the case. Well, here's um, the thing. And you have to, you have to keep this in mind with any employee that you're working with at any kind of a you know company or a large corporation there there are times that the corporation has made rules that they have to follow that it's not their fault mm -hmm. right and I, I i even said this in my conversation with them we i did <laughs> i did a post-mortem ryan i actually asked to see the manager when i went to pick the <laughs> thing up because i i wanted i wanted to understand like how we got here basically you know yeah and i, I understand like i get it They've got a checklist, but it just doesn't make any sense. Like yeah. if you if you have isolated it to be not a hardware issue, or sorry, you've isolated it to be there's no way it can be a software issue. Why not do the least destructive thing and try and figure out what the hardware issue is? Right, right. now to be fair, um, <laughs> did you, you didn't try to swap to, to put in like stock RAM or, or Apple RAM? Right. And that was next on my list. So yeah. after disconnecting all the peripherals and all that kind of stuff, but I, I was also just like, you know what? I've got a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. And I'm not saying I, it's I'm your fault. Waste anymore. I'm just saying that. Yeah. You're, you're, you're victim blaming. I understand. That's kind of your thing. I get it. <laughs> but it, yes, that was going to be my next step. Hmm. But you know, at some point I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to let them deal with it. Um, I've got other work that I got to get onto. I don't want to screw around with this thing forever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that probably should have been my next step is is just try that myself you know so now that, you're go ahead no no finish i was gonna say so now you're joining us from not your um your barn your office it looks like you're you're in your house um and earlier i was trying to find the photo that you tweeted of your setup i appreciate <laughs> you going the extra lengths here and uh getting this you know, it's so funny. I every time I try to go to Twitter for your account, I just get the walrus fly image that you posted one time. Let's see. Walrus fly? Yeah, yeah. You you when you're at the iFly. <clears throat> oh no no no! Don't don't go to my personal account. Go to NY Studio. Oh, you posted it from there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So you're going to show everyone the how the sausage is made, the behind the scenes of my. I mean, you posted it on Twitter. There. It's not that I'm exposing you, you know, to the world here or anything. You're you're kind of you're you're kind of blowing me up here. There we go. Yeah, that's that's where we're that's where we're that's at. Where we're we at. got these things back. And that's, yeah, don't. That's don't the result ask, of working with the Apple geniuses. Is you get to stack a piano stool on top of some other stool. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'm well, happy here. that you're we're here. And that you're at least you're in your house where you have your Google Fiber connection. So, oh, hey, sorry, you don't. Which, have which I do not have, Ryan. As you well know, <laughs> I do not have Google Fiber. This is just 
I mean, this is just abuse. I, I thought I might get some sympathy from you from this whole story, but no. Yeah, but the, the long, the I get long sympathy. story short. I have all the sympathy in the world for you. The long story short is the Mac Pro is back. Yeah. They fixed it by pulling the RAM out. And um, I haven't set it back up yet because I need to hope that the time machine backups are good to go and I can restore from there. And if not, reinstall everything, hook everything back up. And uh, I honestly have been busy enough that I just haven't had the time to mark off a couple hours to do that. So I predict you're going to end up not doing it and you end up selling it and buying uh, a Mac Studio. Well, you need to put some kind of time frame on it. Okay. I don't know. Six months. If you're just, if you're just gonna say that, like that could be true. At, Isn't at that point. that Mac Pro's uh, Intel, right? It's Ooh. Intel, and uh, I... <laughs> well, look, I have it on my lap, so I don't have to worry about the the heat <laughs> issues. It actually has been a rock. Like it's been amazing yeah. to work with. I'm I'm not. The only thing that makes me unhappy for the purchase is the time frame with which they released Apple Silicon right. after that. You know, right. that's literally the only thing that makes me upset about it. I, I've used the crap out of that. And that's one of the reasons it's going to take me a while to set it back up. I have almost every port in that damn thing with something plugged into it, man. You would you would freak out if you saw how many Thunderbolt oh, wow. cables are going into that thing. Yeah. All right, Andrew. I'm, yeah. I'm glad that you're here um, and that you were able to uh, to get everything working. So, Andrew's not you're not on your usual uh audio setup and, and video setup but you're looking good sounding good um a couple of things have happened since we last uh had a live stream andrew one is that uh uh there was a release from pixel and tonic on the adding like automatic release uh support github release support to um for the plugin store and then also i'm just looking at my notes um, then the, oh, the craft generator ha had a support added for that GitHub action. So that's, yep. that's some good stuff if you're interested, uh, and, and you do plugin development. And then the, the biggest thing, which is why, uh, our topic for the day is the release of the new version CK editor, uh, three, which, uh, pulls in support for CK editor five, the actual like software package itself. And uh, this is exciting. It's uh, there's there's a lot of new stuff, and so um, Brandon Kelly uh, kindly offered some of his time to us. So we're gonna pull him in. Let me assign Brandon a guest spot here, real quick. And while while you're pulling him in, people yeah. may I'll do a little bit of setup. So people may remember that CK Editor was actually released for Craft Three a while ago, right? Yeah. But it wasn't fully featured in that it didn't really integrate that well with Craft in terms of things like images and linking to images and all that kind of good stuff. And um, so even though CK Editor came out a, a little while ago, like I would almost consider this an entirely new thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's based on a, a brand new version of CK Editor, and it also has a deep integration with Craft CMS. So. This is uh, this is actually big news because yeah. long form content is an incredibly important thing for many many content authors. So Redactor works, but mm -hmm. there are some quirks, and makes it a little bit frustrating to work with. Um, and I'll I'll leave it up to Brandon to discuss you know why they weren't interested in what a Redactor X or some of the other uh, packages from Impervi, but they decided to go with the uh, CK editor, but version five i think was just coming out mm -hmm. and it wasn't fully baked and they also it was so different from the version four that the initial plugin was based on that they didn't do want to do all the work of the integration with craft only to have to then redo everything right when the new version came out um right, sorry let's bring in uh brandon kelly let's see if this works hey brandon whoa we're all skinny great so Brendan, where we left off, I was just giving people a rundown that CK Editor was actually released a while ago, but it wasn't fully integrated with Craft. Um, and I guess we're yes. kind of interested in your, first of all, why are we looking at CK Editor at all? Why aren't we just still using Redactor? Who? Oh, well, uh, what's the political way of replying to that question? <laughs> um, uh, I don't know, like CK editor 
we we have a long history with Suki Editor, uh, dating back to the EE days uh, with our Wigwam plugin, uh, and it's always been just a really good workhorse of an editor. Uh, we really like it. Um, the one thing that it hasn't had going for it for a while uh, is just the styling, the UI to make it look right within the CMS has always been a little challenging. Um, that's kind of been the one Achilles heel with it. But um, but CK Editor 5 has really improved on the UI front. Uh, to the point where I would say it's actually even more elegant looking than Redactor. Um, and so that was kind of like the big thing that pushed us over the edge and like, okay, like Redactor had like that one thing going forward. It looked really nice. It, it felt elegant. It felt like it made sense within the control panel. Um, but I think we're at a point now where like, okay, CK Editor is equally, if not much nicer looking. Uh, and uh, and then it's got everything else going for, for it in terms of stability, performance, security, accessibility, uh, and, and extensibility, so. So Ryan, how are we going to do this? Are you going to uh, dive in and start showing? Yeah, I wanted to show, or are you gonna... yes, I wanted to show the, um, the, the new CK editor. And so let's, uh, so CK editor, Brandon, uh, obviously already existed. So this is just an upgrade. So if I already have CK editor installed, um, I assume I either upgrade through the craft control panel or by editing my composer file to, to give it the like 3.0, right. To bump up. Yeah. You have to order. change the sember to carrot 3.0.0. Right. Um, or you could just, and, th and this is only, this is only panel. for. This is only for craft four, by the way, is something that we should probably mention. Aha. Uh -huh. Correct. Correct. Um, yeah. And I should point out, like, if you were one of the few people that had it installed before, you're actually going to have to reconfigure all of your CK editor fields. They'll continue to exist. Your content's not going anywhere, but the way that you set these things up now is just so different. There was no way to like provide a migration path that kept everything intact. Yeah, that makes sense. So you refer to Redactor, which honestly is what I've always uh, used because it, it just seemed to fit more with the craft control panel. Um, yeah. What are we looking at here, Ryan? What's on the left and okay. what's on the right? So on the right is Redactor, and then on the left is the new CK editor. And it's not, you know, I got these on half screen, so it's not going to give you that. So there's our full toolbar for the CK editor. Um. So they're and, both rich text editors. Yeah, they're both rich text ed editors. Oh. The um, there is the ability to upgrade from, or, or I guess it would be an upgrade or to migrate from a Redactor to to CK Editor, and I tried that yesterday and it worked flawlessly. Um, I don't know if there's any gotchas. And in, we're gonna in the, we're gonna show that later, right? Uh, yeah, we can definitely do that once I demo this. I'll upgrade this Redactor field here. Um, cool. So uh, let's see, Brandon, what's like the highlights for you in terms of what's new in CK Editor uh, 3? We'll talk about the plugin version 3 versus the older version. Like what's the big yeah. thing here? That's well, new? so CK Editors had like a weird life. Um, there was version 1, which was just really quickly thrown together. Um, version two, uh, kind of the same thing. Like it was, it was not even bundling CK editor. Uh, it was really just kind of like leaving it up to you to provide your own build. Um, and that's specifically because like the way CK editor works, um, you know, in general is you provide this, this, uh, you know, custom web pack based build of it with all the features built into it. Um, and, uh, and we didn't want to include every single thing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and have you kind of like disable functionality. And so we just figured like, okay, the easiest way to do this is just, you know, you go onto their website, you click some buttons, build your own build, pull it in and, uh, and just give us the URL to the field. Uh, it was, it was super lazy, um, <laughs> but it worked. And, yeah. you know, it, it also was a way to provide both CK Editor 4 and CK Editor 5 support um 
CK Editor 4 uh, is obviously older, but like like does have an edge in terms of accessibility. Um, there's there's not really thorough accessibility documentation written for CK Editor 5 yet, uh, according to the team. That that may be because the accessibility support is just not quite up to where CK Editor 4 was yet, uh, quite yet. Okay. Uh, which is unfortunate. Um, yeah. And like, there's various people that like really rely on those features. And so that was kind of one way of us providing kind of the, you know, pick your own, pick your own uh, adventure sort of thing. Like if you need the accessibility features, provide a CK Editor 4 build. If you don't, then go for, go, go forward with CK Editor 5. Um, one of the inspirations for doing all this now is that CK Editor 4 is officially reaching end of life in June. Okay. Uh, and so basically at that point, there's not really any reason for us to continue trying to find a way to support CK Editor 4. Uh, you know, it's going away. We're not going to support something that CK Editor itself is not supporting. Um, and so like, okay, it's just time to put all of our, you know, uh, eggs in the CK Editor 5 basket and mm -hmm. move forward, you know, go forward with that, you know, 100%. Um, didn't and so that provided an opportunity with, for us to. Wasn't there the same ahead. problem with Redactor too? Then, in terms of it being supported and maintained. Yes, um, we've. <laughs> I mean, that Improvis support for Redactor has always been a little sketchy. Uh, even when we're technically in the window where everything's working great, uh, support-wise, there's still bugs that just go unresolved, and and uh, you know we've just never had a ton of luck getting a version of CK editor that we felt was like actually reliable. Um, and so we've just basically kind of lost hope as far as that goes. Um, I know there's Redactor X and um, and the current version of Redactor we're on is losing support, I think, in the nearish future. Um, but we just we just haven't seen any reason to believe that that's going to offer a significant improvement on that front. OK, so we have a um... A question that came in uh, earlier today or yesterday, and it said, "Will Redactor be updated to work with Craft Five, or is it going to be completely removed?" Any yeah, plans? I mean, I think considering the version of Redactor that it's built on is is reaching end of life, um, and Redactor X is yet another major rewrite, uh, and you know, again, like ninety nine percent of the work with these things is getting in there and extending it in a way that like helps these things deeply integrate with crap. Yeah. I don't see us putting those sorts of resources into Redactor X. So most likely we are just going to let it die and, you know, encourage everyone to move over to CK editor. Yeah. And we'll show and I, the... I would say just a... go ahead. I would say just as both as a user and a developer, I would much rather have you make one awesome rich text editor than distributing right. your time amongst i would much rather see that happen so good yeah there's there's not there's not really an roi story there as far as redactor goes yeah that makes sense there's um, an eol story though <laughs> and we're going to show the the uh the migration uh, so it's a console command that that ships uh with with the plugin then you can just migrate from redactor to uh to CK Editor uh, four, 3, and uh, it works It works really nicely. But before we do that, let's kind of dig into CK Editor, because I think the first, like off the bat, things that I notice are it it fits and, and uh, kind of sits within the control panel so much more nicely than it did before. Um, mm. And there's- I would say nicer than Redactor, honestly. Like I know yeah. it's, like it's, it's like, and, and I should say like, you know, obviously we have gone in there and styled it a bit, Mm -hmm. But even just the, the stock install, like just right off the bat, looks pretty close to what you're looking at here and looked great. Like awesome. really, really nicely done. And so, it, I, I agree with you. I think it looks great. It, it There will, oh, obviously, there will be some like who moved my cheese kind of stuff in terms of <laughs> content authors that may not be, um, you know, they, they're not... Uh, necessarily as computer savvy or whatever and they they may wonder you know wh where did my bold button go and, and that kind of stuff um but i do think the, the ui looks great yeah and i think as far as content authors go you know anyone that's worked extensively re with redactor has run into several various bugs and mm -hmm. uh so hopefully <laughs> it's a very quick sell and reorientation around CQ editor 
Just, and who knows? Maybe the they've day. used C CK editor before. Maybe in, in some other CMS or something. Maybe they they already have that knowledge. Who knows? Yeah. Yep. All right. So let's let's dig into um, some of the new features. And Brandon, you can um, yell at me if I'm uh, misstating anything. So no, no. What we want you to do is we want you to correct him, Brandon. <laughs> like if he calls you Brian, make sure that you correct <laughs> oh him. And, and and any any little mistake he makes, make sure that you yeah, correct. Well, you him. He likes it. You did you did mistype my Mastodon handle the other day. Oh, did I? Is it <laughs> not? <laughs> I'm the only Brandon at Craft CMS, so uh, so we just went with Brandon there. But you know. Oh, instead of Brandon, oh, my bad. All right, yeah. I think I was so I was editing people's the Twitter handles. Sure. The, anyway, the <laughs> Brandon's first email to me, by the way, a long time ago. <laughs> 10, no, 15 years ago? How long has it been? Who knows? A long time it's ago. It's been a while. Uh, was correcting me because I wrote his name as Brian instead of Brandon on a website that I was running at the time. Anyway, so it's just kind of an ongoing joke. And I also make a lot of mistakes. All right, um, let's jump into uh, the CK editor. So a, a couple things that um, I've noticed other than just that it fits really nicely into uh, the craft control panel is, you know, this that you see here is something that I custom styled so it looks as close as possible to the how the content will look on the front end, including uh, you know the styling for the the um, head the the header sizes and the text size and line height and all of that. Uh, don't mind this; I got halfway through styling <laughs> an alert bar, um, and and so that's actually kind of nice because even though it's not you know obviously you're not previewing this right; it's not a live preview. But you can do something pretty robust. Um, I forget where, somewhere in their documentation, they actually have a, uh, oh yeah, here it is, right here, there's demo. I mean, you, so you can do something as elaborate as this in terms of getting it to style. Like you can have these like call out boxes that are stylized in, inside of the CK editor field, um, as long as you write the CSS to, to make that happen. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of opportunities there. But uh, one of the things that I was having fun with was that the, the setup of it. Um, let me just go into the actual field setting. So this one is Richard text. You're probably going to want to go to settings. Yep. I was oh, just going to show where you set oh, the okay. config for the field. Because you can give gotcha. each uh, instance of the CK editor field its own config. Um, level one customization is one that I created, it ships with simple, which is just, um, you know, your basic, uh, uh, rich text. You're still running, you're still running 3.1. Am I? I, I, no, I should be oh, running no. yeah. 3.2 out of the, uh, the, uh, word count setting there. Uh, you know what I did yesterday before you released it, I, up, I, uh, moved to, um, dev main. Uh because, uh, mm. but maybe you didn't merge in those changes yet. Update live, update live. Do it, Ryan, what could go wrong? <laughs> Nothing could go wrong, I got this. Okay. I mean, right. we have a mixed I'm history sorry. on this. I'm, I'm just saying. What am I, I gotta remember what. Um... Composer update. Yeah, I have to remember if I'm running Andrew's setup or if I'm running um, DDEV on this. All right, there we go. Oh, uh, see, I was running dev main before. Yeah. All right, so we'll update live. Make sure I'm on the latest one. We're not out of the woods yet, Ryan. <laughs> Any uh, uh. So anyway, I was gonna I'm gonna show the the how you configure this because that to me is um. And we we want to see what's cool behind things. those advanced disclosure triangles and stuff too. We want to yes. see all the things. Come yes, on. Yes, we do. All right, let me go back into my fields. So Richard text. There, there we, we go. go. Show word count. And again, so you choose your config, so you can have a config. Uh, and it, well, sh we'll show in a few minutes how to create the config, um, which is super cool. Here we got assets. Anything here to call out? This seemed pretty straightforward to this me. This is almost exactly identical to Redactor's settings. So okay, should be very familiar. And then under advanced, we have our purify HTML setting with a warning. Uh, and then a config, which 
uh, you can you can set up, I guess, so you only uh, filter out certain things. If you need maybe like a div in there or something like that, it won't filter that out. Is that right? Yeah, I think in general, you would use it to expand on what we do by default. Okay. If you have like custom like data attributes you need to allow and stuff like that. Great. All right, so that's that's really it for uh, the, the, the instance of the field. So let's go um, into the CK editor settings. And this is where I'm uh, managing my configs. So the simple is the one that comes with it, um, which is just, you know, you can choose your, your text style, whether it's a paragraph or a heading, and then just bold, italicize, and link. So that's the default. And then there's this thing down here called config options, which you can enter in as JavaScript or JSON. Um, and this is where you can then uh, add your own config options, which then merges with uh, CK Editor's default config. Is that right? Correct. OK. And then custom styles, um, where now I can style the CK Editor, you know, if I'm uh, if I'm having it like for H1s, I can have them styled a certain way, specific font size, and so forth, um, to get it to look. You know, I'll show you this example up here, right? To get it to look, if I wanted to, be this uh, this specific, to get it to look like this. All right, so let me pull up my um, my config that I have. All right, so here, uh, so we can drag and drop down into the um, toolbar. So if I wanted to add like a video, I could add that over here. Oop, I could add it over here. There we go. And I can choose my heading levels, whichever are acceptable to me. I just have one through four, since that seems to be manageable for most uh, sites. And now I have here, I've defined some uh, custom config option. In my case, I have, uh, so style, definitions, and I'm defining some classes. Uh, so the class is called alert, and this is defining the element that um, it applies to, that you assign, apply the class to, and then the name of it. And in order to get that to work, I have to define that styling down here. It's just right here, just a simple background. And then I have like a, a before pseudo class to, to place, or I attempted to place a uh, SVG image. So okay. field one is where you tell it the elements that you want some kind right. of custom classes set to. And then field two is where you actually write the CSS for those custom classes, right? Yeah. And that comes up in styles here, right? My Because I defined it under style, and then I, I defined yeah. this. And so that's going to appear here. I don't think I can get to it from here, right? I have to go to the actual. Why don't you, while, you, um, while you're looking at this, just really yeah. quick. Because like obviously this syntax is something that you're going to have to look up, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so, how do I know what so to put big, in here? It looks a big focus uh, has been like trying to simplify this. So we've done a couple different things. First of all, um, if you were to just delete that whole chunk, um, you know, and obviously you can make these changes without saving, mm -hmm. and you create an object um, and you start typing styles. Create an object, Ryan. There you go. And there we've got autocomplete. And this ah. is all, you know, powered by uh, Andrew's uh, craft code editor uh, library, which is pulling in Monaco. Uh, and uh, and we've supplied this uh, this massive JSON schema to it so that it's got full autocomplete. It'll yeah. know what elements are required. Uh, it'll know if you've got like a typo somewhere. Uh, it's, it's really cool. Uh, and so this kind of like gives you a nice setup for like starting to go through and modify uh, your styles. Now let's say you've started making some changes, um, or actually, if you just clear this all out one more time, really quick. Sure. Um, one other thing we did in three point two that's probably worth showing up. If you go back up and let's say you take styles out. Okay. And then, um, so now we're starting over. Now let's say you've decided, okay, let's add styles. Go ahead and pull the styles thing back in now. So as of 3.2, when you do that, that, we're automatically gonna go ahead and just add that. So you don't even need to know that the config setting was called style. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. And then, you know, we also remove it as you remove the button. Um, and then we'll remember 
whatever customizations you had made. So if you delete, if you remove a button by accident uh, and then bring it back in, we'll bring you back to where you were left, had left off on the config. Very clever. So, um, so I just wanted to show, like, repeat what Brandon just showed there in terms of this is uh, going to like auto generate that um, that style. So I originally created this right, and but if I remove it, that's th those config options are gone. Um, yep. And then I can save it, uh, come back, and I can put I can put styles back in here again, and then it will. So um, cool. Yeah. Yeah, Brendan, Brendan messaged me and he's like, well, how do we get autocomplete in here? And I, I, I wasn't sure because the autocomplete that Code Editor has is primarily geared around Twig. Um, there are other ways that it can be done. And then I did some research and I found that the Monaco editor's JSON editor has built in support for this thing called JSON schemas, which I found exciting. Probably three other people on the planet find it exciting, but basically it's a way that you can um, assign autocomplete and description and that kind of thing to a JSON object, which is essentially what this config thing is. And uh, Brandon just took it and went with it. And it looks, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. I mean, it's so much nicer that you just drag in the element that you want in there and it will just put all the stuff in there for you. You don't have yeah. to look it up. You know, yep. I, to, I think Brandon did a absolutely amazing job making that work. Yeah. So, um, so I was showing that if I, even if I remove, um, you know, the, the styles here or, or put in, you know, I can put in something else and save that. Cause it, I saw that it remembered what I had in there last, which was the, those default styles. So I'm going to go and just take out styles and uh, you can see it. So it just removed all those config options. Clever. Uh, let me put it back in and uh, it's back. So the nice yeah. thing is that I've defined this, um, you know, this alert styling. And then in my uh, entry here, uh, let me go down to the, this one. So you can see in the styles. So not only am I able to choose it, but it gives the content author a little preview of the style you're choosing, including my mm -hmm. uh, unfinished CSS for uh, vertically aligning the SVG icon. But that's uh, neither here nor there. Um, and it, it kind of gives you a, a thing uh, for, for how it looks. And to show you like this kind of fully uh, fleshed out here, if you go here, this is the example on the, in the CK editor documentation. You can see mm -hmm. that they have all these different styles and it gives you these little previews of actually what the style will look like when you assign it. So this is, to That's me, cool. this is another level of improving content authoring in rich text fields, which we all know has always been uh, really difficult in terms of uh, tying together what the front end looks like and what the uh, what it looks like in the rich text editor when you're not in like preview mode, right? The side by side panes preview mode. So when is... I see something like what what Brandon did in this um, config options field, I don't know if anyone else out there gets this, but when you see something really cool, you're like, oh man, how did he do that? Because I I, I think the the way that it will auto complete. Yeah. If you want to just type stuff out yourself is great, but yep. one level beyond that is just dragging in those different elements will automatically put the stuff in. And it, it must be a really, I, I still haven't had time to look at the code. I'm going to, cause I want to see how you did it. Cause it's, it seems really <laughs> clever, but that's, that's after getting the, the Mac pro rack set back up again. Like it's, it's on the list, but it's, it's below that. But I, I, I think, uh, Brenna, I think it shows a, a whole lot of care for the people that are going to be using the tool that you got it to work like that. I think that's really cool. Yeah, thank you. It's a uh, it is it was fun the fun little challenge for sure, and it works with JavaScript as well, by the way. Um, and I do I do have a question like that I I promised I would ask. Uh, someone uh, Dane Lindbergh in the chat said, "What is image optimization like in CK Editor?" I'd like to simplify some overly complex matrix content builders, uh, but we don't necessarily want editors to go completely off the rails with it. Uh, Brendan is muted right now. Oh, no, he's not. I'm he's reading not. from, I'm, I'm totally confused. So I switch over to the YouTube pane and it's delayed and I see Brandon yeah. talking and I just, I lose my mind. Um, but basically what's the scenario for image optimization for uh, CK editor? So right now it's just, it's 100% asset transform based. 
um, when you are inserting an image, you can choose which transform to be applied. Uh, hmm. As an admin, when you're configuring the field, you can choose which transform should be used by default. Um, and I realize that's not not the totally ideal scenario. Like we're not giving you source sets right now with multiple transforms. Uh, so there's definitely some room for improvement. Um, as of this point, we were just trying to kind of reach this like feature integration parity with Redactor. Um, but we have a lot of interesting ideas, um, partially just because CP Editor actually gives us some interesting, unique opportunities to improve this that we never really got with Redactor. So well, I think um, that answers it. I think that's the kind of, it sounds like that's the kind of rails he was looking for. Like he didn't want people to just be able to plop in yeah. 3000 pixel wide image, you know, the fact that you yeah, can at least I think, assign I think with source sets though, it would be great to be able to like define like, okay, I want you to pull in, you know, here's the entire source set config, pull in this transform properties, like for this, you know, screen resolution and this other transform for a different resolution. Uh, so there's some room for improvement there. Um, and then also just like once you've got the image in there, you're kind of locked into whatever transform you had selected. So we need to give you the ability to kind of switch between those as well. Um, so we've got some ideas. Um, they just didn't make the cut for this, this initial couple of releases. And Ryan, I got a couple other questions. Should I get to them or should we table? Well, them I wanted to, I wanted bit? to jump back and, and talk okay. briefly, uh, cause Brandon kind of glossed over it, and then we had some audio issues about, um, the autocomplete in those oh, editors. Okay. Cause when I was installing this, um, I, uh, I, I saw this, which was, uh, some Andrew Welch code that was getting pulled down as part of the CK editor. So I'm curious about like the, uh, the genesis of, um, you know, craft code editor and then, um, Brandon, how it came to be part of, um, this, uh, new CK editor release. So, uh, Andrew, I, we talked about C the, the code editor before on the live stream, right? The field. Yep. Um, yep. but what was, yeah, so it's basically, it's basically a wrapper for Monaco, uh, initially created for uh ben croker and and ultimately my purposes for there were places where we needed to edit twig in the cp and wanted a, a better experience um and then brandon said well yeah it looks cool but it'd be a lot better if it was general purpose and i said oh okay um <laughs> and then i re <laughs> and then i refactored it to be uh in typescript and general purpose so it'll just work um, and the idea is it's uh, for anyone who's a plugin developer or uh, module developer, uh, or even on the Twig front end, it works exactly like the other macros that Craft has built in, in terms of just, you know, give me this field with this stuff in there. Um, and it, it looks really, really cool. Um, most of the work, you know, 99.9% .9 of the, what makes this thing cool is that it's using Monaco, which is a really robust editor. Uh, which is what actually the same code that's in here is what powers VS code. It's literally the same code. Mm -hmm. um, and I, th I think that's probably all people care about uh, yeah. code editor. So I'll hand it over to Brandon. Yeah, I mean, so this was like, when we were first kind of figuring out, okay, what exactly, how exactly do we want to do the config here? Um, you know, there were kind of a couple little high level ideas. One was like, let's just continue to let people provide the JavaScript file and, you know, they could do like a module and, and return whatever CK editor config they want from there. Um, the other option was more of like kind of a matrix esque UI where you had, you know, all these different config settings and, and selections on the right, uh, or even just doing that for specific things like the style editing, you know, to be able to like define your, your class as a drop-down field and your, or your, uh, I'm sorry, your uh, element is a drop-down field and then type in your class name and then type in the CSS that should be associated with it. Um, so it was just like all these different ideas. Um, but considering like that there's so many different types of settings that you're going to want to potentially use to customize this experience, um, just giving people an editor seemed like the simplest um, that would cover the most bases in one go. Um, but the big, the big concern there was like, well, how are people going to know what to type? And, mm -hmm. you know, auto completion mm -hmm. was, was the obvious solution there. And so, uh, so we kind of went forward with that, assuming that like, we'd be able to get this full auto completion experience. Um, and then, you know, uh, turned out that it wasn't actually possible or it wasn't 
wasn't easy right off the bat, um, but then Andrew was able to kind of work with us on making that possible as well. Um, and so, you know, I think like at this point, we've got this like thing that's like extremely customizable and flexible, but also giving you the tools you need as a developer to know what's typed, to know you're not doing a typo uh, and, uh, you know, not well, the really the time, really cool like part, the really cool part, me. Brandon, is that if you had built that GUI field or whatever you are a GUI editor, you wouldn't be able to copy mm -hmm. and paste examples from the docs, right? So right. CK editors got some extensive docs and lots of people are using it. The setup you ended up with, people can just go to an example, copy and paste it into their config, take their CSS, copy yeah. and paste that in and away they go, which is pretty wild. Yeah. And originally, um, there was no JSON option. So 3.0 shipped with just, just JavaScript. Uh, and there were two specific reasons for that. The first is that there are some config settings that are going to require JS because the value for the config setting is a callback function. And there's just no way we can, you know, give you a way to specify a callback function with JSON. Um, so there's that technical requirement. And then also just the DX requirement of all of these examples are currently in JavaScript and you know, yeah. to have to like, for every single thing you want to set, you know, retype the thing as Jason just sounded like a pain in the butt. Um, but that was all before we realized there was this major critical DX issue with, with JavaScript, which is that we can't, even today after Andrew's updates, we cannot give you autocomplete when you have JS selected. Uh, and that's makes sense as soon as you understand like how the autocompletion stuff works, which is all based on a J Jason schema and there's no way how would Monaco know how to apply a JSON schema to, to a JS file? Uh, it doesn't make sense. So Andrew actually had a pretty genius idea uh, as far as like continuing to offer copy paste, uh, which is like, what if you just alter the, the JavaScript code to become JSON on paste? Uh, and so we actually have that code in place as well as like yet another way of kind of simplifying your life with defining JSON is if you go to the CK editor docs, you copy a chunk of JavaScript code that was effectively defining an object um, yep. and you paste it somewhere in your config, we will capture that paste content, automatically JSONify it, and then and then let the paste continue. Um, yeah, and that's my one so, good idea for the year, Brendan. So everything else from here <laughs> was, is gonna be crap. It was crap it was total brilliant and uh, and you know it ended up not being that hard to do. And and so that's you know well, because, I think at this point JSON, we've got between between autocomplete and the automatic configuration coming when you when you add toolbar items, like you probably don't even need it, but in the off chance that you're like, you know, off in the fringe uh, settings examples, um, it should it should be one one more step to make your life a little easier. Yeah, and, and, and JSON stands for JavaScript object notation, right? So it makes sense if, if the code is returning a, a JavaScript object, JSON can encode that. And so related to this, um, we got a question in here. What other components can be added besides styles? So we saw that you, you dragged styles down, but what other components can be added to that toolbar and then configured in, in this way? Is it, does it only work for styles or does it work for other stuff too? As far as the automatic configuration goes, I think it was, um, headings, styles, uh, there's a font size button, which Initially, I was completely reluctant to add because that sounded gross. Um, <laughs> sounded like the exact sort of thing that you would want to avoid giving your clients control over. Um, but then someone was requesting it and I finally like relented and looked at the documentation and I realized um, that they actually have a way of like defining classes that that represent font sizes. So you can do it, mm. you know, uh, without like giving your client like full control over like actual like font size properties, which would be horrible. Um, right. So, so you that give would it be semantic like names that actually... correspond to reasonable values exactly. is what you're saying. They can't, they can't just enter yeah. 200 points or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so that was actually the inspiration for this feature was like, you know, it'd be really great if like, as people are adding the font size thing, we're just automatically setting them up for entering class names rather than numbers. Uh, and so that's, that's where that idea came from. And then I, I want to say there was one other and I'm just drawing a blank on which one it is, but uh, there's, I think there's four um, specifically right now where it like, it looked like it would make sense to offer a default value. And I was showing as you were talking, just the, also how it auto completes the default 
um, code there for you. So it's really easy to go and just auto complete it, and then you can customize it as you as you need. Um, yeah. In terms of the style, so I, like what I did, and I'm, I'm sure there's a better way to do this, is because this this site that I'm working on is one of the sites that we build um, on uh, in one of the courses on Craft Quest. But it uses Tailwind, so I kind of went in and just like deconstructed the Tailwind styles, like just by using the inspector and applied them here just to get the basics in terms of like line height and text size and stuff like that. But I saw that CK Editor does support some frameworks, but I think I don't think it's possible really to to have it like apply like Tailwind styles to the CK Editor, um, or maybe I haven't dug far enough. Like automatically yet. adding class names to stuff. Yeah. Is that what you're... Right. Or at least yeah. yeah. Or, or, or yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Lots of people yeah, use I... Tailwind on the front end, and they want what is appearing in the CK Editor window to mirror those styles in the back end when they're entering it, yeah. and. I know that Craft uses Tailwind, but Tailwind has a JIT now, so it's only going to include the classes that you actually use. So I guess the, I guess what people are wondering yeah, we, is we don't is actually there... use Tailwind yet. Uh, we use their reset, but you know we're oh, okay. moving okay. moving the whole control panel to Tailwind is is a larger project that hasn't happened yet. Um, okay. I but that that said, like there's no reason we couldn't bring in a version of that and just have everything prefixed with .ck, uh, just so it's kind of isolated to those those editor frames. Um, yeah, I, it's just honestly just like an area I haven't really considered as far as like default styling for within the editor. As far as like providing Tailwind classes to your content for the front end, because uh, that did come up. I, mm -hmm. Personally, that just sounds gross to me. Like, I don't like the idea of like you add a heading and like we're automatically injecting classes to it. Um, right. That's Tailwind. Like that's something that's that... Tailwind, though. <laughs> well, that's so literally Tailwind, Tailwind. Does have, Tailwind does have like the the um, the plugin called Pros, which Pros, is basically yeah. built for this exact scenario, right? Where yep. like, right. okay, there's True. often going to be like this rich text field based content injected into your page that doesn't have all the classes already. Yep. So that's an option. I know not everyone loves that. Uh, the other option is there, you know, if you're building a traditional site, um, there's, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the retcon plugin, uh, which will go in and like give you the ability to just say like, Hey, okay, output this HTML. But every time you come across an H2 tag, I want you to add this class to it. And every time you come across a P tag or, you know, you know, all, and basically you're applying like, like using CSS selectors to apply and modify HTML as it's being output in Twig. Uh, and then if you're building a headless site and you're doing all this stuff on the JavaScript side, you know, you could also do similar things there. You could just create a DOM with the, with the HTML and then go through and apply stuff and use like query selector all and things like that. So I, I think, you know, like ideally those would be the better option because then you're not, you know, muddying up your actual like stored content with all these class names and making everything extremely hard coded for this Tailwind yeah. site. And this, you know, when you never know, you never know where you're going to need that content later and whether it's going to apply. So, agreed. And this site actually uses Pros, uh, which is a uh, a Tailwind plugin that just you know gives your. And I, I feel like this is something that could be solved at the CK editor level and may end up being solved at the CK editor level at some point because there's nothing specific to craft here. Like if someone wanted to come up with some kind of a CK editor plugin that worked with Tailwind or Pros or something like that, like I, I, I could easily see that being something that will eventually happen just because of the popularity of Tailwind. Yeah, I would I would advise against it just from the fact that like you don't want all these classes to be stored in the database. Like it just seems like it. something that should be like this, like, you know, middleware type of type of solution that happens on output. Yeah, and and that's, you know, that's sort of what I'm suggesting is maybe there will be a way to do that. You know, maybe yeah. there will be a way that there can be some kind of a CK editor plugin that will act as a middleware, you yeah. know, where you'll, you'll build, Andrew, build a, a list of uh, Tailwind CSS stuff, and it will give you some kind of interstitial class that gets applied or built on that. Right? Who knows? I, I don't know how it would work, hmm. but I guess my real point is this, is this is something you can solve in craft, but it is something that may also end up being solved generically at the CK editor level. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and the, the way that I approached it by just, you know, finding the actual, you know, pure CSS that Tailwind was uh, specifying, 
I just tried to get the CK editor just to generally look similar, just so the spacing was right. And so, but not like, it's not a preview. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. And, and you know, I think, I think like, you know, we haven't mentioned the, the acronym WYSIWYG once this call. And I, and I think that's <laughs> probably a good thing. Like yeah. we're, these aren't meant to be WYSIWYGs anymore. I think we're, we've all kind of like moved past this idea that whatever's in this little box has to be perfectly matching with the front end. I think, you know, you have to consider like, the front end is probably going to take multiple shapes. It's certainly not going to look identical on mobile and on your right. on your desktop browser. You might be, you know, feeding it into a mobile app uh, where everything looks incredibly different. You know, it's so so really like the styles feature. I think like ought to be applied a little abstractly in that like it's there to give you you know something that kind of visually matches the semantics of what it's going to be on the front end, but without like trying to be an actual WYSIWYG. Yeah. Andrew, do we have any more questions from the chat? Because I, I want to jump into the migration too before yep. we wrap up. Yep. So somehow somebody let John Morton into the chat. I don't know how that happened. Oh, but I thought he, I put a permit ban on there. him. Okay. Huh. Uh, apparently he's using a VPN and he's evading the bans. But anyway, <laughs> he asked a, a question. Um, is there any way that uh, custom plugins, like a developer could write a plugin for CK Editor? And there's or is there a way to then get that to work with the CK Editor field? So, so there's not a great solution yet. And um, again, the reason for that is that CK Editor is this fully built Webpack thing, right? Um, and we don't have like a way for you to like inject additional plugins into our build process. Um, that said, there is a Webpack plugin that creates what they're calling a DLL version of the build um, where um, where basically the resulting build that we're creating would have the ability to be extended as if it was extended as part of our original build. Uh, so the end result is you could have our JS file and your JS file installed mm -hmm. separately, but then result, but there's no like redundancy there. Uh, your, your JS file is fully aware of like everything that came in ours um, and able to like integrate as if it was, as if it was built together. And so I'll uh, probably use dynamic is, imports to bring all of the stuff in. Yeah, yeah. So Tim is Tim is literally that's on his plate right now. We're looking into how feasible that is. Uh, and sometime in the next couple of weeks, we should have a release out that has has that DLL based uh, build in our plugin. And I do have another question here. Um, ah, right. So uh, Andrew M is asking, so he was playing with it, had issues adding YouTube embeds. They seem to output oembed tags, um, which require paid JS libraries to render. Is that something that we know anything about or is it too specific? I'm aware that's kind of like a um, front end requirement. There's like this, this oembed tag that CK Editor represents media with. Uh, and I, I believe there's wait, there's, there's not, fully commercial options. I think there's some freemium options there as well. Um, but I do agree, it's it's not great. And we are working on providing a better solution for that. There's there's like cool. a link to all the all the options in the readme uh, on the CK Editor plugin. And so that's our- yeah, I would think embedding a YouTube video shouldn't require a paid plugin. Right. That's a little- Totally. It's a little silly. Yeah. 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 All right, so all right, so Ryan, yeah, we're caught up on the questions. Let's do this. If anyone then. else has any more, please feel free while we're going. But, but yeah, go ahead, Ryan, what, do, what are we looking in. at? All right, so I'm I'm just in uh, PHP Storm, just looking at the terminal. So I, I ran uh, just the craft command to, to see this CK editor convert command that I want to run, and it converts existing fields to CK editor. So just to um, to recap here, I have here, um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, Remember, I have two fields here. Why is it called here. convert and not migrate? <laughs> okay, I don't know. Uh, Brandon, do you care to respond to his question? <laughs> um, we actually did consider both. Um, migrate's already kind of an overloaded word, or it would become uh -huh. one, I think, because we already have this concept of migrations, and there's already a migrate command. Um, so it made sense. We figured from the vernaculars, perspective converts probably closer to what people are expecting. What is the command that, I don't remember off the top of my head, the command that will con entryify things, is that gonna be named convert as well or? Um, no, because entryify sounds cooler. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, go ahead, Ryan. Sorry, all right, I, no, I'm, okay. I'm sorry. I'm all right, so couldn't have said anything. Go ahead. So I have two two fields here. There's the CK editor field we're looking at, and then there's a redactor. I'm going to convert this redactor field over. All right. So now, could I just go in here, Brandon, and and click on rich text and then change it to a CK editor? Would that do the same thing as the command we're about to run? You could do that. Um, the The benefit of using the command is that we're also going to um, convert the uh, redactor config over to ZK editor as well. Mm. Uh, so we'll take care of, you know, and, and also like, because those would be two separate field types, um, CK editor would not be fed any of the existing settings on your redactor field. So if you had all these like, you know, specific volumes selected or, you know, different settings uh, underneath the config option there, um, those wouldn't carry over. So the convert CLI command is basically there to like, just drastically simplify the effort and also that to do it all good. in one go right now you don't you don't remember all the different places you have a redactor field it might be some that are buried within matrix and super table and whatnot yep so the bottom line is you could do it by hand but don't because you're going to cost yourself a whole lot more work and just right. real quick the the reason why this works why you could just convert it is both of those fields are based on some kind of like a base html field right so your data your content is the same across them. And you can think of CK yeah. editor and redactor just as kind of like a front end that kind of edits that content along with some settings. Um, yeah, I, they're, I just both, wanna... they're both ultimately storing HTML. And so anything that's storing HTML is theoretically going to work pretty well with other things that store HTML. I just want to emphasize that because that will be a concern for a lot of people when they're considering converting to CK editor is like, I want to make sure all my content's still going to be there and it's still going to work. Yeah, so this this setting does not touch your actual field data whatsoever. It's purely okay. touching the field settings. All right, so make CK, it go, Ryan. CK editor convert. You know, I just realized on this um, one, I don't have a matrix field, but I tested another site yesterday, and it it found it and converted it over. So here we go. It found one re uh, redactor field, and I don't have to even tell it which redactor fields I wanted. To convert, it's just going to convert everything. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do you already have a CK editor config you want to replace? I'm going to say no. Um, that's it. So obviously, it's going to take longer. If I had, you know, 20 redactor fields, it would, you know, maybe take uh, a few seconds to complete. All right. So let's. I mean, it's uh, pretty. It's pretty close because really all it's doing is updating a couple project config settings. Um, so there's not really there's not really a lot going on there. Uh, the the way that it would take longer, I think, is when you have a really customized redactor configuration, mm -hmm. um, and we don't always have an exact one to one mapping of like how that would apply to CK Editor. So yep. in the in those cases, we're gonna just give you like this list of like, hey, here's here's the things we couldn't support, and you're gonna theoretically like have to review those and possibly go off and, and figure out the solution before you continue. That makes sense. And I just saw the, I just had up the um, get status to show the changed files. Um, all right, so let me, oh, actually I was gonna go back here real quick. Um, yeah, so this is now converted over to uh, CK editor. And if I go back into my entry, so now we have um, our original redactor field here, which has now been converted over. And Caroline asked if this migration, uh, if you can migrate to production without repetition. And the answer is yes, because it's just updating your project config. Uh, and, uh, and the next time you deploy and apply project config changes, then everything gets updated. That's fantastic. I, I, I hadn't thought through that far. That's, that's, that's really good. That's going to just save everybody. Brandon Kelly coming in here and stealing my job. That's the only thing he lets me do uh, <laughs> is read the chat and ask the question. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. My job. Well, maybe you should uh, not be so slow with getting the questions on the air here. Um, <laughs> I, I, I actually had it loaded and ready to go. I was trying not to over. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm so just, uh, all right. Uh, uh, are there any other questions? Oh, he's leaving. <laughs> he throws temper tantrums a lot. Um, Brandon, uh, this question was submitted yesterday, and I swear to God, it wasn't me that submitted it. Um, it says, what can you tell us about the upcoming pros field? This is something mm. that is on the roadmap mm. that, that's available on craftcms.com. Um, is this, are there, like, I don't know what that is, but is, is there anything uh, 
that you can share about that? Is that any way tied to CK Editor? Also, it was not me. I want to get that in there. <laughs> okay. It was a person yeah. that put their name in. So we haven't we haven't made a formal announcement about pros yet, but I can say for sure that it is related to the CK Editor plugin. Um, I'm not ready to kind of like go into more details quite yet. All right. So not only is CK Editor a step up from Redactor, it's also going to be some kind of a foundational something. Yeah. Um, you asked about whether Redactor will be ported to Craft 5. Um, the, the, the thing that we are debating is whether we're even going to port CK Editor to Craft 5, or if this prose thing might just be the the way to do rich text field content in craft five so we'll see mm. that's that's it's the only hint i can give you right now but um yeah all right i hear the chiming of the chat so let me know if there's anything uh any last questions there um should i defer to up. brandon i mean uh... <laughs> <laughs> No, people are, they're just idly chatting. There are no, no additional questions yet. Okay. All right. So um, if you uh, haven't seen the roadmap, definitely go to craftcms.com slash roadmap. And um, I know that that's a, a general guide, right, Brandon, for what you guys either have planned or working on, but not necessarily like uh, a, a hard and fast uh, list of things. Is that fair? Oh, no, I hold well, them to like everything that's, that's on there. <laughs> yeah, anything that's in the very left column, uh, it's our best guess, but mm -hmm. obviously things change over time. Um, the only thing I'd say is like, it's also not like as comprehensive as we maybe would have liked it to be. Uh, there's plenty of things that are absolutely in the works and coming, but if we haven't given it a specific release yet, then it doesn't show up here. Um, just because anything that's not tied to a release, like it feels like even if it's already in, in the works, like you know, thing, things change enough that we've, ne we've learned our lesson and, and that we shouldn't even mention it. Yeah, that makes sense. Excellent. All right. Um, Brandon, uh, thank you so much for taking time to, to hang out and chat and share uh, information about CK Editor and also for working through the, the, the technical issues that we had. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see everybody on the next live stream. So Andrew and I stream live on the first and third Thursday of every month at 12 noon Eastern. And so we hope you'll uh, join us. This, uh, the recording of this live stream, for those of you who are watching, I got a question in the chat. This will be available and it uh, will be uh, available for free for everybody so we can get uh, information out about CK Editor to as many people as possible. So uh, Andrew, thank you again. And Brandon, thank you. And we'll uh, talk to you all in the next one. Take care, bye-bye. Thanks guys, bye-bye.